Welcome to the second episode of this series where I share 5 essential cards that you should have. I was surprised by the positive response to the first episode and because of that, here you are watching the second one. If you want to see more of this kind of content, drop a like, subscribe and let me know in the comments. If you have not watched the first episode, you can find it in the end card of this video and the link will also be in the description. I have to clarify that this is not a market watch or an investment video. Also, another reminder that this video is not for collectors but for players. And also, this video will not contain any leaks, only information that has already been confirmed. So let's get the episode started and as you can tell from the thumbnail, the theme for this week's episode is Waifu. Starting off at number 1, we have Charlotte Pudding from OPO6. The ability to reduce the opponent's hand card and mess up their strategies is the reason why you should keep a play set of Pudding. Your opponent has 10 cards in their hand. You play a Pudding and make them shuffle their hand into their deck and make them draw 5 new cards. That's a minus 5 right there. Your opponent just played a Dr. Hawk back, adding a Gecko Mora into their hand. You can play them Pudding and make them shuffle it back to his deck. So many blue decks benefit from Pudding. And Pudding can also find a place in decks like Reiju, Sakazuki, and even Blue Yellow Ace. If this card was released earlier in the game, it would have been a staple in all blue decks. Generic cards with no limitation like Pudding that has hand manipulation effects will always be good even in other TCGs. Number 2 is Ulti. When she was first revealed, I was really hyped for this card because it has a really strong effect. Being able to look at the top 3 cards of a deck, drawing one of them and then rearranging the leftover however you like. It's a really good effect. The reason why this card wasn't played is because of Sakazuki. Sakazuki can do what she does more efficiently. However, I feel this card will see play in the future. We still have many Animal Pirates character that has not received the leader treatment like Ulti, Page 1 and Black Maria. Ultimately, why I would keep a place of Ulti is because of its good effect. I can see it being played more in the future when there are more ways to cheat out a 4 cost character or when we get more animal pirate support which we know we'll be getting sooner or later. A 4 cost character with 5k power that gives you essentially a draw 1 and the ability to arrange your top deck or filter them is bound to see some use in the future. Next is Miss All Sunday from OPO4. Miss All Sunday saw plays in decks like purple and red purple Luffy for a while but that was all the play she saw. Although she has a good on-play effect, the trigger cost is a little expensive for regular decks other than purple yellow crocodile. This card could see some play in purple decks, for example in the upcoming blue purple Hannibal deck to ramp even faster while increasing your hand size with a draw effect. However, as of right now, purple decks are better off without her. That being said, being able to ramp and draw one is a really strong effect and seeing how Baroque works is a fan favorite, this card might see use in the future when we get more support for the archetype. Moving on to number 4 is Khalifa from OPO3. She is a 4 cost character that has the ability to filter your hand and set up your trash as on play effect is you get to draw 2 and discard 2 similar to Sabo. On top of that, she also has a cost reduction effect. Firstly, being a 4 cost character makes it a valid target for Gecko Moria even though she is not currently used. She also has 2k counter which makes it a staple for Rob Lucci decks. As of now, there's only one CP9 leader and I'm sure it won't be the last time we are seeing them. So in the future when CP9 or Cypher Pole archetype gets more support, this card will definitely see a lot of play. Finally at number 5, the last card in this video is Vivi. Why I want to keep a place out of Vivi is because of cards like 9 Core Sanji. Once we get a better blue and red leader, I feel Vivi becomes somewhat playable. And with the lack of Alabaster leader or support in the game right now, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing more of Alabaster soon and they might even have ways to build a deck around their princess Vivi. Vivi is also a fan favorite which will definitely see more love. Maybe if Sakazuki or Gecko Moria wasn't around, this card could have some use and that's why I'm keeping a playset of her just in case. So to round up the video, these are the 5 cards that I feel you should have. Like the previous episode, if this video does well, we'll continue this series again next week. So if you've enjoyed the video, drop a like, consider subscribing to the channel, let me know in the comments what you think of the video and if you want to see more of this kind of content and what card do you want to see next appear in this series. Also follow me on Twitter or X for more One Piece TCG content and as always thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.